Okay, hello everyone and welcome to uh, this Forex Breakout Trading webinar here on FXStreet.com. My name, uh, as always, is James Chen. I'm the Chief Technical Strategist at FX Solutions. Uh, we're a broker uh, in the retail foreign exchange space. Today I will be giving uh, a talk and a presentation on uh, breakout trading. Now many of you uh, are probably very familiar with breakout trading as, you know, in technical trading, there's pretty much two ways you could go about uh, trading the market. One would be uh, through breakout trading, which is among the most popular ways to uh, approach the market. Another way is to uh, trade uh, bounces off of support and resistance. Uh, primarily, those are you know two of the ways to uh, approach technically uh, foreign exchange trading. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, breakout trading. And as always, uh, I'm going to start uh, very briefly just giving uh, you uh, a very uh, quick overview of myself in case you're not uh, familiar with me. And let's go on to the next slide for that. Now, uh, briefly about me, I've traded actively as a private trader since uh, pretty much the inception of the retail forex market back in uh, early 2000s. Uh, I use primarily technical analysis, although I've used other uh, forms of uh, analysis for uh, a lot of my trading and uh, and for my articles, etc. Uh, you know, I've uh, done a lot of writing on um, different forms of fundamental trading, fundamental analysis as well. But uh, in terms of uh, my trading, it's uh, almost purely technical analysis. I've worked for two major forex brokers. Currently, I'm the chief technical strategist at FX Solutions. I've been here. Uh, for about three years uh, at FX Solutions. I'm registered as a commodity trading advisor, a CTA, uh, with the National Futures Association, uh, which means that uh, I could trade um, commodity or Forex uh, funds, which uh, I have in the past, uh, although right now I'm, I'm uh, almost primarily an analyst with FX Solutions. Um, I'm a chartered market technician now, and for those of you who, uh, who know me from the past, I've been uh, doing that for a little while, and you know now I, I am CMT. Um, I've got numerous articles in Forbes.com. One coming out uh, very soon, um, in a few days actually. I've got uh, uh, articles in Futures Magazine, Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities Magazine, SFO Magazine, which is coming out uh, in March. I've got an article in there. Um, I do. Pu I publish daily analysis, including the chart of the day, and this appears both on our website, uh, our company website at fxsolutions.com, as well as on fxstreet.com and, uh, and other sites as well. Now, I also have a blog, and you may have seen that, um, at fxpath.fxstreet.com, and you can take a look at that. Uh, I do daily or intraday analysis on uh, different currency pairs, whatever I see, uh, you know, in terms of if there's a technical level that, uh, that's, uh, that we're approaching or, uh, you know, anything important from a technical perspective, uh, I also have education pieces on my blog, um, announcements, etc. So uh, you could definitely take a look at that. And finally, I have an upcoming book. Uh, it will be uh, published in March. It's all done. Uh, Essentials of Foreign Exchange Trading with uh, by jo and John Wiley and Sons as the publisher. And again, it will be released in uh, in, two th in March of uh, of this year. Uh, you could uh, check it out on Amazon.com, and it's available for pre-order if you want to take a look at that. So that's pretty much uh, briefly about me. Now let's get on to the meat of the presentation, which, uh, which would be Forex Breakout Trading. Now, briefly about Forex Breakout Trading, I will be showing you um, live charts with lots of different examples. So I'm going to try to get through this, uh, this part as quickly as possible. Uh, I have uh, different explanations of the different kinds of, uh, types of breakouts, um, breakout uh, trading opportunities that you might want to take a look at, and uh, I'll have descriptions of those, but then I will go on to the live charts and show you exactly how to, uh, how to approach that on a live chart. Okay, so about Forex breakout trading. Now, breakout trading is defined simply as the violation of price levels, uh, whether static or dynamic. And when I, when I say static, um, you know, you may know that it means that uh, I'm primarily talking about like horizontal support and resistance levels because you have a static um, price level that uh, serves as support or resistance. Dynamic would be a price level that changes, so that would be more like uh, a trend line or a trend channel where uh, over time the support resistance level will, uh, will change. So any violation of these price levels, whether they are static as in an, as in an uh, 
horizontal support and resistance level or dynamic as in our trend line or a, or a chart pattern, um, a violation of the price level would be a breakout uh, trading opportunity. Now, the theoretical assumption of breakout trading is that once the level is violated, there should be momentum in the direction of the break. Because if, uh, you know, if price visits a certain area, a certain price level uh, several times, the more it visits it, the stronger that price level or support and resistance level is. So any breakout of which uh, would assume uh, high momentum. The ability to break out of a support and resistance level, and once that occurs, you know, the assumption, and this is, of course, is a theoretical assumption, is that the momentum will continue in the direction of the break, and this would lead to profits for those who participate, participated in the break. Now, at the same time, um, the caveat here is that it can be tricky because of the preponderance of fake outs, uh, whether they be fake breakouts or false breakouts uh, or mature, uh, premature breakouts. A uh, false breakout is, is um, basically when, uh, you know, uh, the price breaks out of a certain support and resistance level uh, and then uh, goes back down or goes back, uh, you know, to where before the break occurred, and that would be a false break and then uh, possibly go in opposite, you know, completely the opposite direction. Now, premature breakout is when uh, there's a false breakout and then it comes back, it comes back uh, under the break, the point of break, and then breaks out again. So both of those are, are very, uh, you know, not very good for breakout traders. So you've got to be uh, careful about those. Now, uh, breakout trading is among the most popular techniques for trading Forex. Um, basically, as I mentioned before, when you're trading uh, any, any uh, financial market, uh, when you're trading from a technical basis, you're basically either trading uh, a bounce or a break. So let's say you have a trend line. You're either going to trade uh, a break of that trend line or a bounce off that trend line. And that's, of course, taken to the most simplistic level. But uh, for me, those are the, the two main um, you know, opportunities that you're going to take when you're looking at uh, price action around support resistance level, e either uh, bounces or breaks. And uh, breakouts, I believe, are, uh, you know, are more popular in terms of that. So it's, uh, breakout trading is primarily a technical approach, but it can be combined with fundamentals, as many people do, um, for, uh, for types of trading like news trading. For example, when a news uh, announcement comes out, you have support and resistance level, uh, levels on a short-term basis, and you're looking for breaks of those levels with the news. So uh, it can uh, certainly be combined with fundamentals in that respect. Now, breakouts are extremely common on all time frames. Uh, they're what we call fractal in nature, which means that they're, uh, you know, they, they can be extended to all time frames. I happen, uh, you know, what I'm going to be showing you on my live charts is uh, our daily charts because I'm most used to using daily charts in both my trading and my analysis. But you could use this on the short term charts, you know, the five minute charts if you'd like, uh, you know, the hour charts, the weekly charts, or what have you. They're fractal in nature, so they're extremely common on all time frames. Uh, risk management is very straightforward with breakout trading. Uh, it, there can be a very good risk reward ratio if, you're, if that's what you're looking for, which you should be. Um, you know, uh, if you have a, a breakout and then you place, it's very straightforward where exactly you would place your stop loss according to your rules. So that's very uh, simple and um, uh, you could do that very easily. Now, in terms of uh, profit taking, um, what you could do is uh, you either have profit targets or you have trailing stops uh, that could be used for profit taking and I'm going to talk a little bit about both. Um, in terms of let's say chart pattern trading which are bre basically breakout trades, uh, you could have, um, you know, you have built in uh, profit targets but at the same time, uh, you know, rather than doing that, a lot of people use uh, what we call trailing stops which uh, actually lets the market tell you when to get out as opposed to choosing uh, somewhat of an arbitrary uh, profit target. Okay, so th that's, uh, that's for profit taking stop losses. Now, uh, most uh, traders, in terms of entries, most traders use some sort of a filter to enter into a breakout trade, whether it's, uh, let's say, a close beyond a support and resistance level, a close of a, the bar beyond the support and resistance level, and then the next bar surpassing that close, 
or surpassing the high or low of that bar. That's one filter, what we call a filter that you could use. Um, some people use the number of pips, let's say uh, 20 pips or 10 pips beyond a breakout level uh, if you get into a trade. I don't tend to use that. That uh, seems a little arbitrary to me. But uh, I do tend to use a lot the close of the bar and then a move beyond the bar. Um, also, we have pullbacks and throwbacks. And those can be very uh, high probability ways of getting into breakout trades. And I'll show you the pullbacks and throwbacks in a second if you're not familiar with it. But basically, uh, what it is is uh, it's a breakout and then uh, a reversion back to the point of breakout and then a continuation in the direction of the breakout. Those are pullbacks and throwbacks. They can be very good ways to get into uh, a breakout trade. I tend to use those a lot because uh, they are very, um, uh, very prevalent on, uh, on Forex charts. I see them all over the place. Now, uh, you, could trade, uh, you should trade with the overall trend whenever possible. That's not to say that you always need to. <laughs> there are a lot of counter trend traders out there. Um, but at the same time, uh, the highest probability trades, I believe, or uh, you know, uh, it, it's in my opinion that the highest probability uh, breakout trades are the breakouts that are in the direction of the overall trend. And you could uh, decide uh, what the overall trend is by looking, for example, on a higher time frame. But um, uh, in general, uh, try to trade with the overall trend. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, many people do trade breakouts uh, on a, a counter trend basis. Uh, now, some traders specialize in fading fake breakouts or fading breakouts, which is a form of contrarian trading. Um, and you'll see that many times it does work, especially at a, a record high or low. Uh, you see that uh, if there is, uh, in fact, a breakout, and we'll see that on the euro chart uh, back when it was up at uh, 1.6, um, you can see that there was a, a fake breakout, but that uh, many people were uh, on the you know on the other side of that trend and uh, traded uh, against that uh, against the trend and that worked out extremely well for them but you know that's that's another story so uh, you know there are many people that are trading or fading uh, breakouts in a contrarian manner but I would uh, if you're a beginner or if you're just uh, new to this uh, you know the best way to do it would probably be uh, in the direction of the trend okay so quickly let's go on to the essential tools of forex breakout trading. Uh, number one, horizontal support and resistance lines. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, those are uh, uh, probably the main tool for forex breakout trades. And then we've got the dynamic uh, support and resistance levels and the trend lines and channels. And again, I'll show you that. Uh, we've got chart patterns. I tend to use those a lot as well. Um, some people use breakouts with moving averages uh, or crossovers, uh, which are also a, a form of breakout trading. Then we've got... Um, you know, a less used form of breakout trading, uh, which would be the Fibonacci retracements. Most people trade uh, bounces off Fibonacci retracements, but uh, they, they can also be used for uh, breakout trading. Then we've got uh, pivot points in the same vein as Fibonacci retracements. Um, they're mostly used for bounces, but they can also be used for um, breakouts as well. And then we've got the pullbacks and throwbacks, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, now, uh, if you could see on my, ch uh, on my uh, PowerPoint presentation, I've got horizontal support and resistance lines here. Now, these are live charts. I mean, I'm sorry, these are charts that come from, uh, they're, they're historical charts, but they are actual charts. And these actually, these screenshots actually came from my book uh, that I just finished. But um, if you take a look uh, on the left-hand side here, this is a very simple rendition of, uh, you know, of a support and resistance uh, breakout. You've got... Um, you know, touches and the uh, touches of support here, one, two, three, and then you've got a breakout, and that's possibly a good. Um, you know, in this case, it turned out to be a great opportunity to go short. Um, that's a breakout. Of course, these were ch uh, you know chosen from uh, many other opportunities, and this uh, just happens to be an extremely good one. So uh, on the right hand side here, we have ranges here, and these are narrow ranges that um, that uh, many people. Uh, you know, used to trade breakouts as opposed to range trading. You know, some people like to tr uh, trade ranges, but when you're talking about narrow ranges like this, um, probably the best bet is to trade breakouts of those rather than to trade within the range, uh, just from a risk-reward uh, perspective. So anyway, so you've got, uh, you know, these breakdowns here, a range trading situation, um, a trading range situ situation, a breakdown of which, all of these are good opportunities to go... Uh, 
you know, to trade the breakout. Now, in terms of uh, these types of narrow ranges, uh, in terms of the profit target that you take, um, you know, it, it, these are basically traded like uh, chart patterns where you would extend the um, extend the height of the range downward or upward according to the break, and that would be your profit target. And uh, those are generally good uh, risk to reward ratio types of trades, high probability trades. <coughs> so this is um, this is breakout trading in this manner. Uh, in terms of horizontal support and resistance lines. Next, uh, very quick, we go to the trend lines and channels. And I will be showing you, th you this on uh, live charts as well. Uh, you take a look here, you've got an uptrend line here. Uh, several different touches of the uptrend line, at least three, at least uh, I think four or five here as well if you count these uh, multiple touches here. And then you've got a breakdown of which uh, would be you know, a good uh, possible opportunity to take a breakout trade, of course, with good risk management, with your uh, stop loss right um, above the, the uh, point of breakout. So this is dynamic, uh, dynamic uh, support and resistance breakouts. Now, over here on the right-hand side, if you take a look here, this is one of my favorite ways to trade breakouts. And if you've got a, a, a wide range, uh, unlike the narrow range where you trade breakouts of the ranges, this, um, this is a, a, a wide range. Um, I believe this comes from the euro dollar, and uh, where you had lots of ranges uh, last year, lots of um, uh, horizontal ranges, where you take a look here, uh, within the context of a range, you would play intra-range breakouts. Again, this is one of my favorite ways to do it, and it's, very, it's a very good way to get into uh, a range trade. So if you, if you have, let's say, uh, you know, an up and down uh, where uh, price is hitting uh, a resistance point on top, a support uh, line on the bottom, it's going up and down. Now, how do you get into that range trade? You could simply, uh, you know, trade it off of uh, a turn off the bottom, let's say, off the support. But probably a better way, but, you know, probably also a way that uh, you'll get into the trade a little bit later, but at the same time, you'll be more sure that this is a, a, a true you know, turn at, res at support or resistance. Uh, you would trade the breakout of the intra-range um, trend line. So this is within a range, and then you've got a breakout of which uh, you would trade that long, in this case, again here, and again here. So uh, you can take a look at that, uh, you know, very high probability trades uh, within a range uh, trading the breakouts. Okay, on to, so that's a dynamic support and resistance. On to the chart patterns. This should be very familiar to most of you. Um, we've got the triangles on the top left here. Very common uh, triangles on uh, Forex, uh, Forex uh, charts where uh, usually they're continuation patterns, but not always. Often they are not. Often they're reversal patterns. Um, but they're generally considered from a technical perspective continuation patterns you could, uh, but you know, in any case, it doesn't matter. Uh, what you would be doing is you're looking for a converging consolidation in each of these cases, a converging consolidation, a breakout of which in any direction, whether it be continuation or reversal, any direction you're looking for a break. That's a classic breakout trade. Uh, and then uh, you have flags and uh, pennants on the left hand, on the right hand side here, top right. Uh, these are simply, uh, these are also uh, continuation patterns, um, most often. And, uh, you know, for example, the pennants over here on the bottom here, um, these are uh, simply small triangles that usually continue in the direction of the break. Flags are much like pennants. It's just that they're, uh, they're shaped uh, more like um, uh, rectangles as opposed, to, as opposed to triangles. And they're smaller patterns that happen very, 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 very often on Forex charts, and uh, I see them all the time. I trade them all the time. They're great, and you trade the uh, the breakouts of of the pattern, as you can see right here. Okay, to the bottom left we have wedges, and I'll show you a wedge in a second. I believe on the uh, the pound yen chart, but uh, we've got wedges here. Simply, uh, you know, uh, they're lines that go in the direction in the same direction. So. Uh, they're much like triangles in that they're converging consolidations, but they're going in, uh, you know, the same direction. The lines are going in the same direction. This is a falling wedge. This is a rising wedge. 
usually they are continuation patterns again. Rectangle is, as I showed you before, is uh, you know up and down between um, a static support and a static resistance line. And then if it's narrow, especially, you would trade break out of that. Usually they are continuation patterns, but not always. Um, often they are reversal patterns as well. So you got wedges and rectangles here. And then you've got your reversal patterns here on the bottom right. Uh, you've got the, um, here a double top. You've got a triple top. And again, these are all, you're, you're trading breakouts on all these. In the case of a double top, you're trading um, uh, the break of the, of the trough in between. In the case of the triple top, you're trading uh, the, the break of the, the lowest trough. In the case of the head and shoulders uh, top, let's say, you're trading the uh, break of the trend line and vice versa for the double bottom, triple bottom, and the head and shoulders bottom. So those are chart patterns very quickly. And hopefully you all uh, see that, and most of you are familiar with those, so I'm not going to uh, belabor that. So let's go on to uh, moving averages. Uh, very quickly, moving averages. Uh, some people, uh, I do not use, uh, use moving average breakouts extensively. Uh, as, um, you know, they, I haven't really worked uh, that well with moving average breakouts uh, in the past. Um, but some people swear by them. So, you know, I'm going over it uh, now. On the left-hand side here, you have a single moving average. I believe this is a 20-period uh, EMA, but anyway, uh, you've got a breakout right here, which possibly, you know, in this case it was a good one, but uh, possibly it could be uh, a way to get into to get into a breakout trade here. I'm sorry, I don't believe this is 20. This is much bigger than 20. It looks like. Um, I think this is either 100 or 200. But anyway, so uh, and then you've got a, a break here, and then a pullback up back to the moving average and then a subsequent drop there. So that, uh, that employs a pullback, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned before, we've got uh, crossovers. And uh, this happens to be you know, a crossover of a, short, a shorter moving average with a longer moving average. And these are considered breakouts as well. So if you're talking about a crossover here, let's say, uh, the first time it crossed over, and this would have been a good uh, opportunity again to uh, a trade. I do not use crossovers extensively, as you may know. They're you're, they're um, they're prone to whipsaws uh, or very unprofitable sideways price action. So uh, generally, I don't use as much. But you know, moving averages generally can be used as dynamic support and resistance, much like uh, trend lines can, trend lines and trend channels can be. So in that respect, you can use them as um, as uh, breakout opportunities, but you know, again, uh, I don't believe they're as um, valid or as useful as trend lines and uh, horizontal support and resistance lines. So those are the moving averages, uh, and you can three uh, moving averages to confirm uh, crossovers, etc. Okay, Fibonacci retracements. As I mentioned before, Fibonacci retracements uh, are usually used uh, are usually traded as bounces. So let's say here you've got a run up here. You've got a retracement to the very important 38.2% uh, retracement level, and here it was a it was a, a textbook bounce off that level, and uh, that would have been a, a very good opportunity. But at the same time, some people uh, would trade uh, if uh, there is an actual breakout, and of course they could use a filter for that. Uh, a filter being uh, whether a close um, or you know a certain number of pips uh, below in this case. Um, or a pullback, et cetera, you could trade uh, breaks of, um, of Fibonacci retracement levels too. In this case, it didn't work out. There was, uh, you know, it was a great trade for a bounce, uh, you know, for trading the bounce. But, uh, you know, in terms of if there was actually a breakdown below this 38.2, which is uh, probably the most important level in Fibonacci retracements, uh, then uh, you're looking at a possible breakdown opportunity uh, that you could, uh, you know, turn into a trading opportunity. Okay, so that's Fibonacci retracements, and then we've and I'll show you that on the charts as well. Uh, we've got the pivot points, and here uh, same idea as the Fibonacci retracements, where uh, you've got levels that most people uh, would trade a, a you know a bounce off of, but uh, many people at the same time, let's say there's a break of the S2 or the or a break of uh, S3, let's say even 
where you know that the momentum is going in the in uh, that direction. Of course, you don't want to uh, you don't want to trade breakouts. You don't want you want to be wary of breakouts at uh, extreme highs highs or lows. Uh, let's say you know like record highs or lows. Uh, but at the same time, you know within the context of intraday trading, um, you're gonna uh, you know a good way to do it would be to uh, trade breakouts. Let's say of uh, you know the R twos, R one, R two, R three, or the S's, etc. And uh, the question, can I get a copy of the presentation for reference? Absolutely. I'm going to give you my email address at the end, and I'll, I'll be uh, happy to send that out to you if, you're, uh, if you want to take a look at that. Also, this is a recorded webinar, so you'll be able to see it on FX Street within a few days. OK, so uh, pivot points. Those are pivot points, um, breakouts of which, much like the Fibonacci's, can be used as uh, trading opportunities. OK, pullbacks and throwbacks, very important. This is the last uh, tool that I'm going to talk about before I go to the live charts real quick. The pullbacks and throwbacks, um, uh, the, the picture pretty much says it all. Uh, you've got, uh, in this case, uh, I forgot to put an arrow here. This, again, is for my book. Uh, but I forgot to put an arrow. It should be an arrow going up in terms of the throwback. Uh, most people just call these all of these pullbacks. But uh, if you want to be nitty gritty about it uh, in terms of technical analysis, um, in terms of technical analysis, uh, you know, uh, the term for uh, a breakout to the upside, and then a pullback, or I'm sorry, a dip uh, back to the point of breakout, and then a continuation in, in the direction of the breakout, that would be called uh, a throwback. And then uh, in the same vein, a pullback, you know, if you want to be technical about this, a pullback is a breakdown to the downside of a, of a breakout level, of a support and resistance level, a pullback up to the point of breakdown, and then a continuation in the um, in the direction of uh, breakout. So you know these are high probability ways of getting to uh, breakout trades. Uh, as I mentioned before, many people use filters to get into breakouts. Uh, these are a type of filter. Okay. Now, uh, where would you get into, let's say, this throwback trade here? Uh, some people would get in, you know, right when it breaks out. But if you're using throwbacks and pullbacks as filters, uh, you would wait till it actually pulls back to the point of breakout. At that point, some people might get in at the, you know right there, using another filter to get in right there. Uh, other people, if they're very conservative about it, would wait till it uh, breaks out of this point right here, the high point. Okay, and that's a, a more conservative trade. Uh, you don't get in uh, at the best price, but at that point, you're um, relatively you know assured. Of course, nothing's guaranteed, but you're relatively sure that you know the momentum at that point, after that pullback, or after that dip, is going in the direction of your breakout. I use this very, very often: throwbacks and pullbacks. And I'll show you that on the chart as well. Um, very good ways to get into uh, possible breakout trades. Uh, Abel, I, I thought look at chart patterns to define breakout rather than using indicators. Yes. I'm not sure I understand that question, but uh, if you like, I'm going to give you my um, email address in a second, so you can take a look at that. Okay, now I'm going to um, go to the chart examples real quick, and I've got about 15 minutes to do this. Uh, by the way, crazy price action uh, these days, beginning of the year, on uh, all the majors and everything else pretty much. Lots of volatility. Uh, not sure the liquidity has really come back into the market yet, but uh, some crazy things going on. OK, so hopefully you can hear me uh, now. Um, this is a Euro dollar chart. And uh, it's a Euro do dollar daily chart. And uh, as I mentioned before, um, you know, this is all uh, fractal in nature. So that means uh, anything, uh, any other time frame you like to use uh, is fine. Breakouts occur on every single time frame. I happen to like to use the daily chart. So I'm just going to go through this one by one. I've got four different charts I've got to show you, so I'll get started right now. Uh, again, this is Euro dollar daily chart. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, the uh, in terms of the the uh, horizontal breakouts, I have plenty of examples here. Now, if you take a look, you know, I, by necessity, I have to make my chart small because uh, this is being recorded. Uh, intraday able, uh, the time frame I prefer, prefer are uh, either half hour or hourly. I don't like to use the shorter time frames, but many people swear by the shorter time frames: five minute, ten minute, fifteen minute. 
A lot of people use those. I happen to use the higher time frames when I when I look at intraday, whether well, 30 minute uh, hour. Okay, so uh, if you take a look here now, again, uh, you know, because of the uh, purposes of recording, uh, these uh, charts are very small, so uh, it may be hard to see. But uh, you know, if you take a look here, you've got um, you know a resistance line. You've got a breakout of which here, and then you've got a pullback. This this right here is a pullback. Okay, it's a small pullback or throw, throwback, I'm sorry, in this case, uh, a throwback here, and then a continuation in the, uh, in the direction of the prior trend, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the uh, a breakout in the direction of the breakout um, after this pullback or throwback, and then you've got a good opportunity there. Again, throwbacks occur, throwbacks and pullbacks occur on a very common uh, basis. Um, now, within the context of this as well, um, you see here, a flag formation. So you've got a breakout here, which is a possible opportunity. This was back in, uh, you know, in uh, actually 2007. So it was a while ago. But I'm going to show you all of this uh, up to the present moment. Uh, you got a breakout of which a, a throwback here, a continuation, and then you've got a. Um, now you know that uh, there's an uptrend going on right now. So you're in, you're in this uh, uptrend. You've got a flag formation, a consolidation here, a breakout of which. Uh, this this would have been a, a good trade, but you know you would have had to sit through a lot of uh, whips. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, consolidation here, but eventually that turned into a good trade. And then here, uh, if you take a look here, we've got um, you know a move into a ranging situation uh, where you know within an intra range situation you could play you could play a um, a breakout like I was showing you before. Or even breakdowns so within a, a sideways range, uh, you know, you don't know whether it's uh, an uptrend or downtrend at this point. Uh, it's sort of a sideways range, but it's a pretty wide range. So you'd be pre uh, playing uh, trend line breakouts within the range, as you can see here. So a breakdown and then a breakdown, etc. And then you have a, a horizontal line here, and then a break uh, breakout of which uh, went into, you know, would have been a good trade. And uh, you know what, what I was talking about here before with the flag formation. Uh, you know, in terms of the uh, in terms of the target for flag formation, you're simply extending, and in this case, it worked uh, very well. <laughs> you're extending the uh, flagpole, and that would be your target. And here, uh, you know, a break of this uh, a break of this range, you extend uh, the range height up. And that would be your target. In this case, it worked very well as well. Now, uh, and when you make this a little bit smaller, uh, you see that. Uh, all right. Well, let me first uh, deal with this. Uh, where we hit the all-time highs here, um, you have a ranging situation again here, a wide range. Now, you're looking uh, at this point. Many people are looking for a breakout above uh, this uh, 1.6 area, which did occur. But uh, you know, and some people use this as an opportunity to uh, make a contrarian trade or a trade against the uh, breakout. This was a slight breakout. If you had any type of filter for this, you wouldn't have gotten into the breakout. Uh, whether be the filter be a number of pips above uh, above the breakout level, which in this case happened to be um, the high of 1.6017, it actually hit uh, 1.6037, 20 pips above. Uh, you know, you may you may or may not have gotten. That's why I don't like the uh, the pip filter. But you may or may not have gotten into the um, this trade with that uh, that particular break. Um, or uh, you know, what I like to use is the close and then continuation off the close. So in this case, that would have kept you out of this trade. Uh, also, uh, you could use the pullbacks and throwbacks as a filter, etc. Many different filters that people use. Uh, but in this case, uh, you know, uh, this is essentially a bounce off of horizontal support resistance. And many people traded it that way, and those that did were rewarded. So uh, you've, anyway, you've got here um, a ranging situation, and then you've got a possible breakout opportunity, intra-range uh, breakout opportunities right here. You know, once this high was hit up here, then uh, you've got this uh, uptrend line within this range, and play a breakout of that, and uh, that would have been a very, very nice trade. Now, uh, on a longer-term basis, you see that uh, I'm going to zoom out a bit. Um, are there reasons for so many PBs and well, I'm not sure what a PB and TB is, Boyke. But um, if you want to uh, 
clarify that. That'd be great. But in the meantime, let me just show you. Uh, you know, there is a, a trend line here, an uptrend here, a breakout of which, breakdown of which, uh, would have been a good opportunity. If you missed that, you know, if a lot of people did not draw this uptrend line. That's fine. Uh, but uh, you know, a breakdown of there. Now the big breakdown occurred on this horizontal support. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Foyke, pullbacks and throwbacks. The reasons for it are, yeah, they're they're very, uh, you know, they could be profit taking uh, or you know, people trying to uh, do a contrarian trade on a um, a pullback and a throwback. I'm sorry, on a breakout, and then that's why you get that small movement back to the uh, to the point of break, um, or you know, profit taking. Uh, in, in certain certain cases, uh, et cetera, there are many uh, reasons for it. But you know, from a technical basis, you see it all the time, and I hope you've seen it as well. But um, here, as you can see, uh, I'm sorry if you did not uh, catch this uh, uptrend line here. The very logical uh, point of break that many people saw, and many people traded, including me, was this uh, line right here at around uh, 153. And this was a very, very strong uh, support line um, for that uh, particular range. That breakdown is uh, uh, was a great breakdown right there. It di it didn't pull back. It didn't uh, you know have any type of premature uh, break or anything like that. It was a clean break, um, and it worked out very well for a lot of people. Okay, so let's say uh, you played a breakdown of that. Let's say you you missed that. Okay. So let's say it broke down and you missed it. In hindsight, you said, "Okay, that would have been a great place to get in." But uh, the 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 market hit its all-time highs at, at 1.6. Now, um, now we're looking at a possible reversal, uh, reversal up here. So we, we're reversing. It's a double top reversal. We're reversing now. In the context of that, we've got um, a flag, an uh, inverted flag formation here, a consolidation, a breakdown of which, and then a pullback to the uh, flag inverted flag and the continuation also a good breakdown opportunity if you miss that uh, those original ones within the context of the new downtrend here okay and then uh, same thing here uh, let's say you, you miss that uh, flag it went down uh, this was um, um, an uptrend a slight uptrend correction here a parallel uptrend correction a breakdown of which in the direction of the downtrend uh, would also have been a great opportunity to go short on a breakout or a breakdown in this case uh, and then here is also a consolidation right here, if you see where my mouse is. Um, and that would have been a consolidation also. I, I, I can't really tell what that is, whether it's a, um, you know, a pennant flag or whatever formation, but that would have been a breakout as well. It's not notated here. Um, and then uh, here, you've got a very interesting case, and this comes into the recent um, time where uh, this was back in uh, late October, early um, early uh, November, where we came into a consolidation. Uh, lots of people were looking for, this uh, turned into a, a triangle type of formation. Lots of people were looking for a breakdown and a continuation of the downtrend. It didn't work. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It never broke down below this, uh, below this triangle. So uh, although you may be looking for it, it didn't happen. A break out to the upside occurred. So again, triangles can be continuation patterns in many cases, but also, they can be reversal patterns. In this case, it happened to be a reversal pattern. You got a breakout to the upside. Um, in that case, a very good opportunity again in long on a possible reversal, which occurred on low liquidity, high volatility, um, right before the New Year's. And you see that um, a breakout occurred, which would have been incredible. I wouldn't expect anyone to have taken advantage of that because it was very weird, but um, a breakout trade nonetheless. Okay, and then you've got uh, here, you've got a consolidation again into a triangle, uh, and then uh, it didn't uh, continue. It broke down to the uh, downside, and then here we are here um, at the current time. So right now we're in sort of a consolidation consolidation mode here, um, although uh, the euro dollar is getting a little bit more. This is a daily chart, yes. The euro dollar is getting a little bit more uh, bullish as we speak. Okay, very quickly. Um, let me redo my charts here real quick. Okay, same type of thing we see on the uh, British pound uh, against the Japanese yen chart. And I think I'm only going to have enough time to show you two charts. Um, we've got lots of, uh, here we've got a, a, a confluence of uh, different breakout factors. So you got this uptrend line here. You got this uptrend line here. You got a breakdown here. 
at on this breakdown, you've also got um, a flag formation here. Okay, so you've got this uptrend line here, a flag formation breakdown here, as well as, you know, you could call this a, um, if you take a look here, this looks sort of like a, a head and shoulders pattern, a large head and shoulders pattern, shoulder, head, shoulder, a breakdown of which corresponded approximately in this area with both this uptrend line and this breakdown of the flag. Okay, so uh, a confluence of breakout, a breakdown of the flag, a breakdown of the uptrend, a breakdown of this neckline on this uh, head and shoulders pattern. If you missed any of those, you know, another one would have shown up. So one of these three would have been good opportunities. Let's say you missed uh, all of those. Uh, uh, and it broke down. You saw, okay, it broke down, and I missed it. Uh, now we've got, um, you know, bearish price action, a consolidation into uh, a big pennant pattern, inverted pennant pattern, and then a continuation uh, from there into a breakdown of the pennant pattern, and that's a breakdown uh, as well, if you didn't get in originally on these three breaks up here. And then uh, that would have been a good trade as well. You extend the flagpole a little bit down, and that would have been a good profit target, or you could use trailing stops. Okay? And then at that point, uh, it consolidated a bit, and then uh, went into an uptrend, uh, I'm sorry, an, uh, a correction upwards, a breakdown. Of, this is a great uh, trend line. A breakdown of which would have been a good uh, opportunity to go short. Uh, let's say you missed that. Another opportunity here on an uh, inverted flag to go short. This is all with the trend, by the way. So uh, it's very good to trade with the trend. <laughs> so you go short here, and then it went down. Uh, you extend uh, the flagpole down into a continuation, or you could use a trailing stop. Uh, and then you get into here, a very interesting thing here. Uh, this, as I mentioned before, is sort of a wedge pattern. Um, in this case, it didn't turn out to be a continuation. It broke out to the upside. This wedge pattern is simply like a triangle, but both sides are pointed in the direction of uh, the same direction, and you've got a breakout right here. So, uh, you know, that's pretty much all I could show you right now. I have two other charts, um, and I don't think I have time to, to show you that, but uh, let me uh, quickly go back. So very quickly, you know, that is, uh, that is basically breakout trading. I'm sorry I didn't get enough uh, time to show you all the charts I had, but uh, lots and lots of opportunities, all kinds of breakout trading going on, uh, whether horizontal support and resistance levels, chart patterns, trend lines and channels, um, you know, moving averages, uh, Fibonacci pivot points, uh, pullbacks and throwbacks, etc. Many, many opportunities. Now, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me by, by email, jchen at fxsoul.com. I'm always available for you. I always answer my emails. Uh, check out my chart of the day at fxsolutions.com, as well as my blog at fxpath.fxstreet.com. And uh, lastly, look for my book, Essentials in Foreign Exchange Trading. I think uh, you'll find uh, a lot of use in that. And uh, thank you uh, very much, everyone, for your time.